Astronomers representing the University of California at Santa Cruz and the Carnegie Institute of Science have discovered what is being called the first Goldilocks planet. It is the first planet outside Earth to have a temperature that might be right for humans, but much remains to be seen about this groundbreaking find. Is there life there? Could we survive even if we could reach it? And what might this alien planet be like? These questions and more today on A Moment in Astronomic History. How long has, as far as you know, has NASA or mankind been in the search of something like this? The ability to do this is pretty recent. The very first extrasolar planet that I recall, I, I can recall the moment, I was walking across the Dell in 1995, Tom Brickhouse stops me, says, what do you know about Pegasi 51? Said, Nothing, what should I know? He said, story in the New York Times today about a planet discovered around this star. Same method that they use to find this particular planet, Gliese 581G. What you do is look at the light from a star. If it moves towards you and away from you, that light wavelength is shifted. And it moves towards you or away from you as a planet moves around it and tugs it back and forth. You've got something of a certain mass. If it is of a certain size, then it's probably rocky which means it's Earth-like, mm -hmm. which means it could be Earth-like in many ways, have an atmosphere, the temperature is right for liquid water to exist, everywhere on Earth where there's liquid water, life exists. Let's talk about the possibilities that are out there of reaching this planet. Now, it would take 20 years, even with the space shuttle that traveled at light speed, which we have not harnessed yet by any, by any circumstance. No, nothing, nothing close to that. So, well, what I've read is that, using a contemporary technology, it would take generations. Absolutely. So, what, 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 are, the, uh, what are the possibilities right now? Right now, essentially zero mm -hmm. <laughs> of, of being able to get there physically. Uh, even the small spacecraft, that are leaving our solar system thousands, tens of thousands of years to get to the nearest star. And this one is 20 light years away. The nearest star is four, so five times that. Uh, really no way we know of right now to get there physically. Mm -hmm. um, communication via radio, possibly, at the speed of light. Um, even then, 20 light years away, say hello, 20 years to get there, 20 years to hear hello back, 40 years mm -hmm. between messages, a long time, very difficult. What we can do though is to see, we're, we're going to have the capability of being able to see whether there is life there. If you look at the earth and you look at the atmosphere, okay, it has certain things in the atmosphere. The mm -hmm. earth has nitrogen mostly and oxygen, mm -hmm. and then traces of other things. Oxygen is a key. Mm -hmm. Oxygen is a very reactive gas. If it's not being constantly replenished, it's going to react with rocks on the surface, and you cannot maintain a 21% oxygen atmosphere unless something is replacing what reacts with those surface rocks. That something on Earth is plants. CO2 in, oxygen, oxygen out. Right. That's it. So we possess the technology to discover life. What kind of time frame are we looking at? Being able to do that is probably within the next decade. Mm, Literally, uh, very, very soon being able to do that. The way it works, the planet passes in front of its star, okay? There is starlight, obviously, passing through the atmosphere. Mm. And some of that starlight is absorbed by the atmosphere, mm -hmm. and the way it's absorbed tells you what molecules are in the atmosphere. Wow. If we detected the presence of water that way, if we were to detect the presence of oxygen, there are ways to have oxygen in the atmosphere without life as we know it, but they're really, I mean, it's a real stretch. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. hard to think of any other way you could have that without life as we know it.